You've been hearing for a couple of years now that Trevor Lawrence was going to be QB1 in this draft, that he was going to be the best quarterback in this draft, and he was going to be the first quarterback taken in the 2021 NFL draft. And let me be clear, because some folks, especially it seems like maybe some Jags fans, aren't going to understand this, so I need to make sure I explain this clearly, is that there's a difference between where a prospect ranks and where they will be drafted. Trevor Lawrence, if you watch 2020 film on all of these quarterbacks, to me, you cannot walk away from that thinking that he is the best quarterback prospect in this draft. It's just not true. Like, that's where you have to divorce the media hype or the talking yourself into it because you're a fan of the team and you know he's likely to go there. Like When we talk about projectable traits and we talk about guys that show the most it factor in terms of quarterbacks, like Trevor Lawrence is not the first guy that I would put my money on in this draft being an elite guy in the league. That doesn't mean that I don't think he could be a very good NFL quarterback, franchise guy, perhaps someday sniffing at elite. I certainly have said that I think Jacksonville and Urban Meyer system potentially is a really good fit for him. But just because he goes drafted number one overall or I won't have a huge issue with them taking him number one overall doesn't make him QB1. The man I'm about to talk about, this, this right here, Zach Wilson, this is QB1. And the ironic thing is, is that technically when you look at my grading and as you watch these different quarterback scouting reports, you'll see that somebody else technically, from a pure numbers grade standpoint, graded out a little higher than him, but... Sometimes you have to buck that just a little bit and you have to go based off of your feeling and your instincts. Is a lesson I learned from 2017 when I even, I believe, said in the scouting report talking about him that he had all the potential to be an elite top five quarterback in the league and I stuck too much to my grading scale and I didn't stick enough to my instincts and my gut and what they were telling me similar. With Josh Allen in 2018, I learned from that a little bit and I got a little bit bolder with it, but still feels like I held back a little bit. Like, tis better when you're doing these evaluations. Like, go with what you see. Fuck what everybody else sees. There's nothing worse than trying to hedge your bets because you're focused on what others might think. Like, it's important to potentially consider that, but at the end of the day, you have to go based off of what you see and what you evaluate. And what I saw in 2020 and what I evaluated, there was clear daylight to me between a Zach Wilson and a Trevor Lawrence. There's at least enough of a daylight for me to say that if I was drafting number one overall, I would rather have Zach Wilson than Trevor Lawrence. And why is that? Because you're going to say, well, he's not the biggest guy in the world. Like that's a bit of a drawback. Whereas you look at some of these other guys seem to be more well put together the Justin Fields of the world, they're like 6'3", 6'4", 220. Trevor Lawrence is 6'6", but yeah, he's real thin in some ways. But he's still 6'6", potential to put on more weight, sure. Um, you know, you've got Trey Lance is 6'4", 230, 235. Uh, you have some big dudes in this draft where Zach Wilson kind of comes in on the lower end of that ideal scale where he's 6'2", 215 pounds. And, you know, here's the thing. We should have learned now, based on recent seasons, that this height just shouldn't matter. It just shouldn't. Who gives a shit if a guy is six foot five or he's five foot eleven? And I've had to kind of come out of that as well. If you can play, you can play. And you can make it work. And Zach Wilson certainly is big enough. And he's a similar type of size to guys like, let's say, Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. Would you not draft those guys at the top of a draft now? Knowing with what you know of how they developed in their career because they were only 6'2", or even a Deshaun Watson. You might have other factors there, maybe not. But size, like that, that's a drawback for him. But it's not, it's a, it's a nothing factor for me, frankly. I mean, because when I just look at all the other traits that Zach Wilson has, I just look at him and I say, as a passer, he's the best passer in this draft. He's more accurate than many of the other guys in this draft. I think his arm strength is better than most all of these other guys in the draft. I think he's pretty mechanically solid. I saw a guy that consistently was able to go through his progressions, even though sometimes it seemed like he was a little bit more fluid, starting off left and then shifting to the right, as opposed to going right and shifting to the left. But 
here was a guy that I could see go through his progressions and do so with some type of speed. And what I really liked about him was, even though every once in a while from a decision-making standpoint, he would throw some danger balls, he would throw some risky balls. When you've got this type of arm talent, that's a trade-off, like Mahomes like. You've got to live with some of that. Because you don't want to constrain the talent in your system or fear of failure. This guy made more special big-time NFL throws than anybody in this draft class, period. Period. You know, the being able to roll. You see, you see the recent footage of him at the Pro Day where he's rolling out to the left, and he's throwing like this back behind him, and it's going 50-plus yards down the field on an absolute rope. Like, you, can't, you just can't coach that. Like, that just comes with skill, and that comes with feel, and physical arm talent and he's got it in great abundance and he's mobile enough to be able to extend plays he's got that improbability that if the structure breaks down that might be where he's as dangerous as anybody because he's not going to have to just take the primary read he knows he has a sixth sense a feel for what's going to progress down the field he's a guy that can look off the primary or secondary option and look and say, oh shit, I got somebody rolling 50 yards down the field on a post. And he can not only see it, he can react to it quickly and he has the arm talent to be able to pull some of that stuff off that other guys in this draft class just can't do. Now you could say there are concerns about him because he's primarily a one-year wonder, but then I would counter back with that and I would say, yeah, he's a one-year wonder in some respects, but then I would also counter that with saying, well, yeah, he was also injured, which is probably the bigger concern when you talk about Zach Wilson is durability. The ability of availability can be the most important trait that any young quarterback can have. And up until his last season, that was a question, that was a concern, and that was a problem. Well, he was able to largely stay healthy this year, and he had a big year as a result. Now, some people are pointing out that maybe the level of competition wasn't all that great. You know what? You can only play who you play. And let's not pretend that a Justin Fields played 13 Dynamo teams. He certainly didn't. He didn't even play a full season. Now, Trey Lance barely played at all in the 2020 season. <laughs> he got one game out of him. Trevor Lawrence, you're going to tell me Clemson played a true gauntlet of a schedule? Like, give me a fucking break. That's just not true for any of them. You might say Zach Wilson's schedule was a little bit softer, but even with that being said, you're still looking at projectable traits. The ability to throw a magnificent deep ball with great ball placement, the ability to throw with different arm angles and different arm slots. Like there's Patrick Mahomes in his game, there's Matthew Stafford in his game, but I lean a little more towards Mahomes in terms of the improvisation ability, the ability to throw across his body, the ability to make those truly dynamic special throws that only a select few in the league can make. Like I promise you, if you ignore media hype, if you ignore what's been told to you for the last three years, if you watch three or four games of Trevor Lawrence and you're looking based off of traits such as arm strength, accuracy, mechanics, field vision, decision making, pocket presence, and then you watch a Zach Wilson the difference is clear and it is kind of striking. You'll sit there and say to yourself, I promise you, unless you are trying to convince yourself that Lawrence is QB1 or you're trying to convince yourself that your team is making the right decision by drafting him number one, you cannot watch these two in 2020 and think that Lawrence was better than Wilson. You just can't. I promise you. Like as far as the durability thing, that is a valid concern. Because if you can't stay healthy, but I look at it like this. When I looked at the traits in his game, one of the best arms in this draft, one of the most accurate arms in this draft, mechanically sound, solid, a guy that has the ability to go through his progressions, process and read what he sees, relatively good decision maker, including being willing to take some chances and trust his talent sometimes. That can also be something sometimes that a quarterback challenges with. It's not always just bad decisions or making bad throws. It's the bad decision of not making really good throws that they know deep down they could make. 
He's a guy that can stand tough in the pocket. He's got the movability and maneuverability within the pocket. He's got a feel for when pressure is coming at him. Like, I could go through all the things. He was a captain and a leader at BYU. You're seeing all these reports of people really pounding the table for him. And it all comes down to this guy absolutely 1,000% needs to be drafted by the New York Jets at number two. Period. No trading away multiple first-rounders at this point for Deshaun. No sitting there and trying to get cutesies and build around Sam Darnold. You have the chance to be where you're at and draft a real franchise changer. It's because you dropped three second-round picks into moving up from six to three a couple of years ago to get Sam Darnold should not in any way, shape, or form preclude you from taking Zach Wilson now. Zach Wilson, to me, is quarterback one in the draft. He has the most projectable all-around talents that I've seen out of any of the quarterbacks in this class. I think his arm talent is what you bet on. As far as the injury piece, it is hard to project injuries one way or another. Because you'll have guys that had injury problems throughout their college career, and they're fine in the NFL. On the flip side, you could have guys that never really had any injury problems in college, and then they get to the league, and they can never stay healthy. Think like Kevin White. When the Bears took him in the first round in 2015, it's heartbreaking because you saw all the talent, but the reality is he could never stay healthy. Like he busted for a really bad reason because he couldn't stay healthy. But you couldn't really project that. So I have to assume he was able to stay relatively healthy his last season in BYU that he's going to be able to do so in the league. And if you take away those durability concerns, he's the best quarterback in this class by a good margin. Really. And if he was six foot four, six foot five, he would be graded even higher. This is, if anything, exposing to me through this process some of the flaws in my grading system, you know, where I might need to tweak it for next year. But I get the same vibes watching him that I got watching Patrick Mahomes four years ago. I hedged my bets a little with Mahomes. I fucked up. I still had him as QB1, but I wasn't as passionate around him as I should have been. I wasn't as big of a champion for him as I should have been. It's one thing to make a mistake. It's another thing to not learn from that mistake and let history repeat itself again. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to be big and be bold. And if I am wrong, I am fucking wrong. So be it. Can't win them all. But I will pound the table that for my money, the dude in this draft out of all of these quarterbacks is Zach Wilson. And he is, with his arm talent, with his improbability, the ability to make the special NFL caliber throws more than anybody else can on a consistent basis, this right here, Zach Wilson, he's your quarterback one in this draft. Fight me about it if you want. I don't care because the reality is we're not going to know for three or four years anyways.